how to build muscle and get to 10% body fat at the same time. In my first three years of training, at the time, the lore in the bodybuilding community was you first need to bulk up to gain muscle tissue and then to get on a shred. To take it a step further, you could dirty bulk, which is a period of aggressive weight gain used to promote muscle and strength gains, also known as the seafood diet. You see food and you eat it. Although this approach did work, the big negative was that the aggressive dieting required to trim up a lot of fat. In hindsight, I lost more muscle tissue in my cutting phases because my diets would have to get ultra aggressive to strip off the fat. Fast forward another three years and a scientific approach is what I've been using to successfully build muscle and lose fat at the same time. And in this video, I'll be sharing the exact science and how you can do this successfully. Let's dive straight in. It is well understood that the building of muscle and losing fat simultaneously is possible and likely probable if you fall within these five categories. Category one, the new lifter. Due to being most primed for the muscle protein synthesis, the building of muscle and the calories from fat fueling this process. Number two, overweight slash obese individuals due to their large energy reserve from body fat for the muscle building process. Number three, the detrained athlete. In the most simple terms, it's much easier to build muscle back than it was to build muscle from scratch due to muscle memory. Number four, the suboptimally trained athlete or the slacker. Number five, anabolic steroids, which allows to upregulate muscle protein synthesis and pulling energy from the fat reserves. Most of us could potentially fall in categories two, three, and four. Personally, why I love the science-based approach to training and nutrition is that it allows you to cut through the noise. This hasn't been the first time I've utilized these methods. I took a similar break in December 2017 to be in great shape for a photo shoot in February and in 2018, this was a general consensus on my social media. In this video, I'll be sharing and giving you five simple steps you need to accomplish this feat. But before we dive in, a lot of research and editing goes into making a video like this. Just do me one favor, if you wouldn't mind, gently hit the like button. It will be greatly appreciated. And if you enjoy this kind of content, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're new. Let's kick it off. Step one, nutrition. Fat tissue and muscle tissue are controlled by independent systems. Therefore, it is possible to lose fat due to caloric deficit while still building muscle granted that you're providing adequate protein and a progressive training stimulus. How to set up your nutrition. When it comes to making nutritional recommendations for weight loss or weight gain, it's common to see a specific number of calories added or subtracted from the maintenance calories. To calculate your maintenance, this is the simplest format to get to a rough estimate of your maintenance calories. First, we need to figure out your BMR, also known as your basal metabolic rate. Take your weight in pounds and multiply it simply by 10. If you weigh 180 pounds, then your BMR would be 1,800 calories, roughly. Then, to figure out your maintenance, multiply your BMR by the activity multiplier. In my case, I train five times a week and therefore use a multiplier of 1.55, which gives us a maintenance calories of 2,980. Let's call it 2,800 for this video. Start your diet at 2,800 calories. And if your primary goal is to build muscle first and then lose fat, increase your calories by 2.5% weekly or bi-weekly. If your primary goal is to lose fat, then decrease your calories weekly or bi-weekly by 2.5% to 5%. With reaching 10% body fat, the fundamentals of fat loss stays the same. To get to 10% will require you stay diligent to that deficit. You stay consistent and allow time to lose that fat. More important than the calories and arguably the most important factor in recomposition are your macros, namely your protein intake. A high protein intake has no clear pitfalls. Research has shown that a higher protein diet being more superior to a lower protein diet, especially in increasing fat-free mass in conjunction with resistance training. Eating in a range of 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein 
per pound of lean body mass. This is my algorithm. So hypothetically, at 180 pounds and 2,800 calories. Starting off, I give one gram to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Choosing the higher limit, that would be 1.2 grams times 180, which is 216 grams of protein. I then take 20% of the total calories and I put that towards fat, which would be 2,800 times 0.2, which gives us 560 calories. And to get the grams of fat, I divide that by nine calories, which is 62 grams of fat. The rest of the calories goes towards carbs, which is 344 grams of carbs, finally giving us the macros of 216 grams of protein, 344 carbs and 62 fat. That being said, that could be a totally independent video, but to keep it short from your total calories, 80% should be from whole foods and 20% should be snacks of your choice. Each week, depending on what your primary goal is, I would either increase or decrease my carbs by 2.5 to 5% weekly or bi-weekly. Before we jump into step number two, as I promised in each and every single video, I'll be doing a giveaway. This is just for me to show my appreciation to you and also to get the year 2022 started off right. And I'm picking three people immediately for the giveaway. You'll be winning one EHP Labs of a hundred dollar gift card, another one of Gymshark, and finally Alphalete. The three winners are one, Hussein, Dueli. Number two, Daria Melicia. Number three, Raquel Bergman. DM me on Instagram at drmike.eth. Now I'm going to be picking another three winners in this video and you'll have a higher chance of winning in each and every single one. All you have to do is number one, like this video. Number two, in the comment section down below, comment what your goal is for 2022 in terms of your physique and then be subscribed to the channel. And finally, and most important, you need to be following me on Instagram at drmike.eth. Do those things and you're eligible to win and I'll be announcing it in the next video. Good luck, but let's jump into step number two. Step two, training. Training is the driving force to body recomposition, meaning it's easy to lose fat by using the diet alone, but nearly impossible to build muscle without weight training. Weight training is paramount to building muscle and improving the body's composition. These are some of the things that you need to consider and that what I want you to focus on. Number one is form and technique. Here we want to focus on how to execute the exercise without causing harm or injury to yourself and to attain the maximum benefit from each lift. Number two, weight. Choose the heaviest weight you can to achieve the desired number of reps in each set without sacrificing your form. For example, if you have to do six reps for a flat dumbbell bench press, choose the heaviest weight you can that will challenge you to hit six reps. Take note of which weight you chose and try and improve on this in the next exercise. Rest. When performing a compound movement, example, the bench press, squat, deadlift, overhead press, I normally take two to three minutes between sets. With accessory exercises, one minute rest is enough. And with ab exercises, I normally only take 20 seconds. This is the most important factor in training. So just go by feel. Personally, the only thing I avoid is being on my phone too long or having a conversation mid-exercise. Another pro tip, record your weights. Progressive overload is when you're gradually increasing the weight, frequency, or number of repetitions in your strength training routine. This challenges your body and allows your musculoskeletal system to get stronger. Step three, recovery. Unfortunately, two painfully underrated variables that can impact your recomposition success on an enormous scale is sleep and stress. It affects the function of almost every type of tissue and system in the body, the brain, heart, lungs, and others. And as much as nearly every physiological parameter, including your metabolism and immune function. A 2018 study by Wang and colleagues had a group of participants on a caloric restricted diet and they were separated into two groups, a control group who slept the normal hours and one group who slept one hour less for five nights. The results were amazing. Both groups lost equal amounts of weight due to their caloric restriction, 
But what was lost exactly is the interesting part. The group that slept enough hours lost 83% fat. And in completely inverse proportion, the group that lost one hour of sleep lost 85% of that weight, but from muscle mass. Subjects sleeping normally lost most of their weight as fat, while subjects sleeping poorly lost most of their weight from lean mass, including muscle. What I've put sleep so highly is that it can sometimes be a wasted effort if you're not accomplishing the basics. Tip four, cardio. Through my competition prep and even in my lean bulk, I incorporated low intensity steady state cardio in two forms, informal and formal cardio. Informal cardio included accumulating a number of steps per day. Tracking this on your phone, smartwatch, I would walk between 8 to 13,000 steps a day. I would start at 8,000 steps and slightly increase, further increasing the calories burnt and fat from fat. My formal cardio would be done on a treadmill, low intensity steady state cardio. Between three to four sessions a week, starting at 20 minutes per session. If you're up for it, set your treadmill at a max incline, which is typically 15%. I would walk at six kilometers per hour and keep that consistent. This would elevate my heart rate to over 140 beats per minute and maintain my VO2 max at roughly 65%. Research shows that this elicited the maximal amounts of fat lost. Awesome. And to finish off step five, and I would consider this the smaller part of this pyramid. It's the 1% in terms of being able to successfully complete body recomposition is supplements. And these are the supplements that I highly recommend in my personal opinion. Number one, I would say a multivitamin. I would get Perform from EHP Labs. There's new tropics in here and the vitamin profile at the back is extensive. I take this once a day. Why multivitamins are so important is that it's very likely that you're deficient in some sort of vitamin to allow your body to function at its best capacity. The second supplement I would suggest is a whey protein. My personal favorite is Isopept, the Reese's peanut butter cup flavor. And why protein is so important is that it's a supplement to help you hit your protein goals. As I mentioned, it's extremely important to hit that protein goal to help you achieve the ability to maintain your muscle tissue, if not even build on that. If you don't wanna be eating completely from a meat source, having 20 to 40 grams of protein from a whey protein is fantastic. The next one, the most highly researched supplement in the fitness industry overall is creatine monohydrate. It has the ability to help increase your total output performance in the gym and consequently your ability to build muscle mass. It is what we consider an inexpensive supplement and at the same time it's well researched, it's easy to use, just taking five grams a day and it's a great way for you to build on muscle tissue. And then finally, I would say this is at the end of the list, but as a caffeine source. So you can have coffee, but if you don't want to have coffee, I love using a pre-workout. What that does is I'm able to have a better power output in the gym. My focus is better. So I'm training harder in the gym, right? So building muscle because I'm training, I'm progressively overloading with a source of pre-workout. I would take this maybe two, three times in a week. And at the same time, I'm also expending more calories throughout the day using the pride specifically because of its caffeine content. So that does help me in terms of being able to lift more, build more muscle and lose fat because the caffeine makes me more active by burning more calories. And I'm gonna leave it here. If you want to get anything from EHP Labs, my sponsor, you can use my discount code DIAMONDS10. That directly supports me and that shows EHP Labs. You're coming from me. The link is in the description. But I'll end the video here. Again, to enter in the next giveaway, all you need to do is like the video, comment down below what your physique goals are for 2022, subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram at drmike.eth and you have a high chance of winning in the next video. Let me know any questions you have in the comment section down below. You know my main goal is to help you. So I'll reply to any of your comments. If you need assistance, I'm here for you. I'll see you guys in the next one.